Praise God. I'm back. Sorry about that, folks. Hello. Yeah. Daddy said, Eddie said he lost the feed. Okay, it's, but it should be back right should now. should be back right now. Could you look? He, he, he said, Eddie seemed to think you started a watch party thing and it, it cut you off or something. Did they hear about the, the offering? Feeling. Did you guys hear about the offering? Sorry. They didn't hear anything about the offering. All right, folks, we're going to take the offering all over again because apparently I got cut off and I am so sorry okay. for that. I messed up. Yes. So we'll start it again. Okay, Praise I God. Hallelujah, God is good. I'm sorry for that, people. I uh, made a mistake. This is all new to me. Again, you know, I started out by saying about uh, Genesis chapter 26, about sowing in famine. I, 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 again, I apologize for that mess up. Uh, but anyway, it says that uh, Isaac sowed, and he re I see you're all back there. I can see everybody. Praise God. Hallelujah. Anyway, he reaped in the same uh, year that he sowed in famine. And I'm not here to talk about famine. I am talk really want to talk about how God will meet our need no matter what. We're in a tough spot right now. God wants to prosper his people in this time. The, uh, people who are out of work in the economy is, you know, basically shot, shut down. Eddie can see you. Excuse us. Tell him we're just... Hold on. Eddie can see you, but he cannot hear you. He can't hear you. Yeah, he he just stopped talking because I just didn't hear. Can you hear me now? Can you hear him now? Talking. I'm talking. I, I just. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, because he's on the phone with me. Oh, gosh. All right. Sorry about that. I got okay. Pastor Eddie on the other end telling me what I'm doing okay. wrong. Anyway, praise God. If you can hear me, let me know that you can hear me. If you're out there, I know. Michael Lancaster, I know you're watching. Anita, Susan, can you hear me? And uh, let's see. I hear you. Thank you. Michael, you're connected, man. You're full of the Holy Ghost. We can, You can hear me. Praise God. Anyhow, so we want to receive our offering. I used the verse of Scripture over in Exodus where Moses took an offering for God, for the people, and it says God's had... Use people who have a willing heart. And the people brought so much that God had to okay. give it. Okay. Tell them, stop bringing the money. Okay. Stop bringing the gifts. Stop bringing what you're bringing. Stop bringing the gold, the rings, the earrings, whatever you're bringing. Stop. Because there was too much. And the key to the whole thing was it was a willing heart. They had a willing heart. They had a willing heart and they were obedient to God. And we see this every time, several times in the Bible with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Joseph. So we want to give you that opportunity to give tonight. You could do it in three ways. You could text, go online to our website, or you can mail it in. We prefer the texting in the website. It gets it to us a lot quicker. But here they are. The, the number to text to is 732-856-856. 5050. And if it's the first time you're ever texting, you're going to have a little window come up and ask you for some information. Then you'll never have to have that again. You'll just put your amount in, press send, and we get it. AbundantGraceChurch.com slash offerings. You can go to the website and do it. That's automatic too. We, we get notified right away. Or you can mail it to the church, 108 Indian Head Road. Tom's River, New Jersey. Uh, make the checks out to Abundant Grace Church or AGC. And again, uh, we prefer the other two methods, but whatever, whatever you're comfortable with is great with us. Praise the Lord. And uh, let's pray for that offering if you're doing it now. Maybe people have already done it. I don't know, but let's pray. Father God, we just praise you tonight. We thank you that we can meet this way elect electronically. It's just amazing what... The world can do through electronics. We can reach more people than ever before. Father, and as the people give tonight, as they send their offerings in to support the church, as I said before, Father God, I believe after this, uh, they open up the churches again and they re re uh, relax all these regulations, churches are going to be filled because so many churches are reaching millions and millions of people through Facebook. 
Praise God, Father. So as we receive this tonight, we ask you to bless the people, Father God. Meet all their need, all their needs, and more, Father, through Christ Jesus, Father. We thank you for it, and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so let's get back to the Word of God. Hallelujah. Uh, let's see. I got to make sure I get over in the right screen. Okay, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 tells us, For God not has, has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Praise God. Aren't you glad God's done that for us? You know, and during this time, we need to remember that we have to look at our circumstances from a place of victory. Jesus already won the fight. We're here to maintain. We're here to make a show of the devil ourselves. All right, which is going to lead me to what I want to talk about tonight. You know, and uh, we need to fight the good fight of faith. But again, we've already won. So we're really fighting from a place of victory. God has given us all the tools we need to win. So what I want to talk about really is the source of afflictions. I was going to say the source of suffering, but, you know, people get really depressed when you say suffering. But you know what? Not, not for anything, suffering is part of life. Aren't we glad we have the victory in the midst of suffering or affliction? What we have to understand is God is not the source of the suffering. He, he does not send temptations and trials our way to teach us lessons. He doesn't do that. James tells us, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. Because God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Did you get that? He doesn't tempt anyone. So when people say, God brought this on me, you could say, God don't bring that stuff on you. That simple. Rather, God's the one who sends the answer. He sends relief through the word. He gives us the power to rebuild. You think after all this is done, this church is coming back stronger and bigger than ever. There's going to be the biggest revival you've ever seen. I'm telling you that. God, it says, 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 9 says, The Lord knows how to deliver the godly out of temptation. And God's power to rebuild is always greater than the devil's power to destroy. Amen. You know, so what is the surface, source of suffering? You know, uh, we'll use, you could use the word affliction. It sounds nicer. But, you know, uh, there is no suffering where there is no sin. And uh, there are three sources of suffering in our lives. Number one, Satan. Number two, others. And number three, our own bad self. We're, that, that's it. All three resulted from the original sin in the Garden of Eden. And, and so most Christians think Satan is, is the worst enemy, saying without Satan, we would never sin. There. And that's so not true. Because, the, in fact, sin begins in us. Anything that's not of faith is sin. Do you realize that? If, it, if you're not believing God in faith... That's a sin. That's like punching God in his eye. But, you know, Roman tells us, but Satan and all his demons are bound. They'll be bound for a thousand years, but still there's going to be sin on the earth. And that's where a lot of it comes from. We still have the nature of the flesh. It tempts us to abandon the will of God and, and, and try to solve our own problems. You know, I found out in all the years I've been a minister... I've given up trying to solve my own problems because I only dig a hole deeper. And I just have to trust God. That's it. That's faith. That's where we have to be. Our worst enemy is ourselves, not Satan. He's probably taking notes, you know, because we do such a... We hurt ourselves so much. And, and, and suffering comes from two, diff two different ways. We're either out of the will of God or we're in the will of God. In other words, we're never exempt from afflictions on the earth. It can come upon us anytime. Look at what this pandemic came out of nowhere. It's afflicted the entire world, all right? But, and, and when we're out of the will of God and there's sin present in our lives, that'll happen. We have no one to blame but ourselves. But we have to not sit quietly and do nothing. We have to believe God. You know, uh, I, I believe it's a... First Peter says, for what credit is it if you are beaten for your own faults? 
and you take it patiently. But if someone persecutes you, you take it patiently because you're waiting on God. Okay? So that's what we have to understand. And at such times, if, if you, you know, and, and I, I know that what's happening to us is not because people, because you have sin in your life, although you could, but the pandemic is here for whatever reason, how it started, the devil actually, you know, but if you have a problem, if you have sin in your life, ask God to forgive you. You know, it says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So when you hear the word of God, if something's clicking in there, take care of it and do it. God wants you. You know, not all self-induced suffering is from sin. Suffering can be from ignorance. And when I talk about ignorance, in other words, you don't have to sin and hope you, you don't have to sin to open the door to Satan. You just simply have to out, act out of ignorance of the word of God in your life or not listening to the spirits leading in your life when he's telling you to do something. He might be telling you to call someone. And much of the suffering we encounter is due to our own bad decisions in the first place, you know? And so we need to be mature enough to admit it, repent, and let the Holy Spirit redirect our lives in the right direction. It really doesn't get any simpler than that. You know, there's no deep, dark secret you got buried at the bottom of your foot. Because if it's at the bottom of your foot, it's under the foot feet, it's under your feet, and, and it's un, Satan's under it. Amen. Anyway. And what we're going through now is not self-induced. The pandemic isn't self-induced. I, I didn't start it. But as I said in a previous live stream about the coronavirus, the coronavirus, the word corona comes from a Spanish word that means crown. And I am here to tell you, we serve the corona of coronas. His name is Jesus. He's given us authority. And he's put this plague under our feet. And we need to act like it. We can also suffering when walking in the will of God. Psalm uh, 34, 19 says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them. The Lord delivers them out of all of them. Aren't you glad? You know, when we're in the will of God and there's no sin present in our lives, we can squarely blame the devil. Satan would rather afflict us because we have opened the door. Uh, would rather open the door through ignorance, but if you if you know you're right with God, you could say, Mr. Devil, take a hike. Just tell him who you are. You know, Jesus suffered while in the will of God. We know that. But he never committed sin, yet he suffered. He told us we would suffer and be persecuted. He says, blessed are you when you are reviled and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. But it's also a time for rejoicing. I'll tell you why. Matthew chapter 5 verse 12 says, Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. And Jesus is our example of suffering. He didn't complain. He didn't moan. He didn't groan. He just stuck, stuck with the word of God. He was the word of God. You know, he's our, our example how to handle suffering. It says, Who when... He was reviled, he did not revile in return. When he suffered, he did not threaten. But he committed himself to who? To the one who judges righteously. You know what that's called? Get ready, write this down. It's called faith. When you commit yourself to God who judges righteously. All right? And now, here's another question people ask, and it's probably the most asked question in Christianity today. Why does God allow us to suffer? Well, hallelujah. Because he just wants to see you squirm on the ground like a worm. No, that's not true. But why does it happen? And if God is so truly compassionate, like people say, you hear a lot of people say, they can't understand a God who lets sickness and disease and everything else come up upon people because you know why they, they don't understand it. they don't understand God they don't understand the nature of God they don't understand that he's got a father heart that he would never do that 
But why would he do that? Why didn't he just stop suffering completely in the world? Because there are sinners out there. The devil is the god of this world. But here's the good news. We have authority over him. I'll explain this a little bit. Suffering means something you're undergoing. A hardship, a pain, an emotion, an influence, an affliction, an affection, a passion. That's what the word suffering means. So it means a lot of different things. You know, uh, we, how many saw the movie The Passion of the Cross? Christ. The Passion of Christ. The suffering of Christ. There was a passion there. He knew he had to do it. He knew what it was. But, uh, and the whole issue can be summed up in this. There's a verse of scripture in the Bible. Uh, Ephesians chapter 3, verse 10. It says, To the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God but might be made known by the church to the principalities and powers in heavenly places. Did you get that? Why is suffering? Why do we go through trials and tribulations? Not that God wants us to. God won the greatest battle there ever was against Satan in the resurrection of Jesus. But he has chosen to leave us here on this earth to prove to Satan that the church is strong, that all of his demons, that the victory will continue against him through God's children, the church. Even though Jesus is absent from the earth, we still have the victory. My James chapter 1 verse 2 says, My brethren counted all joy when you fall into various trials. Now why would he like, if you weren't going to be tried, if you weren't going to suffer, you weren't going to have an affliction, why would he say count it all joy when you fall into diverse trials? Knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. God does not leave us on this earth to escape adversity. He leaves us here to win it from that place of victory that we have in Christ Jesus. He's given us superior weapons, intelligence against Satan. God loves to watch us take on the kingdom of darkness and win our daily battles every day. And he receives glory when we walk in victory over Satan. That's what God does. That's what God wants. But 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except that is common to man. But God is faithful. God is faithful. Who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So, you know, uh, afflictions... Are really and, and and this is not gonna we're gonna get done early tonight you know but uh, but he, here's what I want to share with you suffering is important part affliction is an important part of our Christian walk with God why there's a difficult that's a, that's a difficult statement for Christians to take but the truth is this you can't have victory without a fight that's why it's called the good fight of faith all right Satan's job is to block as many blessings as possible, our job is to walk into the enemy's territory and take back the stolen blessings. Like I said, Satan is still the god of this age, this world where we live now. We are the winning team. Jesus defeated him. And he's won that great battle on the cross and in the resurrection. But he's left the responsibility of the church. Everybody say, I'm the church. Okay, I couldn't hear you. But he left that responsibility to the church to recapture the blessings of healing and deliverance and prosperity from our enemy. Yes, that's what Jesus, that's what God has called the church to do. Just as Jesus went about doing good and healing we're all all who are oppressed of the devil, God wants us to go around doing good, healing all who are oppressed of the devil so we can continue Jesus' earthly ministry 
we're supposed to be doing what Jesus did. And he was afflicted. He suffered. People came against him. They lied about him. All different types of things. But Jesus kept on trucking. He didn't sit. I'm, I am sure Jesus didn't sit down in the, in the, at night on a mountainside with the disciples and say, man, what am I going to do? What? People just keep coming against me. I don't know what I'm going to do. I, I don't know what was in the Father God's head when he sent me here in the first place. You know, Jesus didn't say that. Jesus kept going. And he kept the faith and he kept going strong. And Christian brothers and sisters who's ever watching this, whatever church, I don't know who you are, but I'm telling you right now, God didn't abandon you. He gave you the weapons of a warfare that are not carnal, but they're mighty to pulling down the strongholds. So don't sit there and say, oh God, why is this happening to me? Oh, the core. I might, I, I, I tested positive. So what? You served the corona of Coronas. Jesus. And he's under your feet. The devil. It's under your feet. So don't sit there and cry the blues. Alright? God doesn't see adversary and suffering the same way we do. In God's eyes, and this is what adversity does. And we'll bring this to a close. But he don't look at it the way we look at it. He looks at it as the place for a, a victory. But here's what it will accomplish in your life. If you let it, it will accomplish this in your life. Just like James chapter 1 says, count it all joy. Because you're going to come out perfect on the other end. Amen. Anyway, it's an opportunity for advancement in your life. Afflictions bring challenges. And when we accept that challenge, we can advance. It's an opportunity for victory. Victory only comes after a battle. Without a battle, we could have no victories in our Christian life. And that the good news is, we are guaranteed a victory in every battle that we face. It's an opportunity for spiritual growth. Maturity comes through struggles. You learn things. This is true both in the natural world and in the spiritual world. How many you hate to see your own children grow through things, through struggles? But you know, they usually go through them and come out stronger on the other side. Amen. As long as you pray for them, they grow emotionally, they grow physically. It's an opportunity to glorify God. God is glorified through the use and growth of our faith. You know, Abraham, in Romans chapter 4, verse 20 and 21 says, He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded or convinced that what God had promised he was able to perform. Really, do you think God is able to perform in your life? The greatest use of faith is the struggles we face in life. Faith is a weapon against Satan. What good is a weapon if you never use it? You know what happens to a lot of people? This just came to my mind. You know, you ever have a gun that's sitting on a shelf or anything, and one day you decide to go out hunting? And you take your gun, you put a bullet in, but you haven't cleaned it in six years. And you go to fire, you get a misfire. Nothing happens. You know, that's what a lot of people do with their faith. They sit it on a shelf. They don't believe it because they just, life is just, you know, just humming along real good. They're making money. They're doing this. Nobody's getting sick. And they don't have any, they don't get up and thank God every day for, for breathing, for meeting all their needs. They just go, man, I got this under control, man. I I'm good. Then, one day they get slammed, like the coronavirus, and they are freaked out because it's like the gun that's on the rack that they haven't used in 10 years. They decide to start shooting at the enemy and nothing's coming out. So, it's important that you develop your faith. Okay? It'll help you develop the next one. It's an opportunity to develop patience in your life. Patience. Coming through trials is the only way you're going to develop patience. If somebody goes and helps you all the time, you'll never have patience. In Romans chapter 5 verse 3 and 6 and it says, and not only that but we also glory in tribulations knowing that tribulations produces perseverance and perseverance produces 
character, and character produces hope. Now, hope does not disappoint. Wow. Because God, because the love of God has been poured in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. James, again, James chapter 1, verse 3. I said it again. Count it all joy when you fall into diverse temptations, various trials, knowing the testing of your faith produces patience. I mean, what good is patience if there's nothing to be patient about? An opportunity to develop character. You know, the fruit of the Spirit is developed under pressure. You know, when you plant tomato plants or whatever, fig trees, they're, they're, they grow and they're developed under pressure and they give out fruit. You know, I know when they, it's a lot of times in, in figs and grapes and different things that they withhold water to force that to develop character. We often believe God is anxious for us to come out of a trial, but actually God is more interested in our development during the trial than at the end of the trial. It's, <laughs> praise the Lord, it's the trick more than the destination. Our character is shaped by, during the trial, we become stronger at the end. And lastly, it's an opportunity for blessing. God can turn every cursing into blessing. I've been standing on this, Romans chapter 8, listen, God is not, you know, we, I've seen on Facebook, I think I might even post something on it. God is in control. Here, here's a newsflash for you. I challenge anyone to find me that verse of scripture. God is in control. God's not in control. We're in control. Think on that for a while. Anyway, God can turn every type of cursing into blessing, every battle into victory. Romans chapter 8, and I love this verse of scripture. We know all things work together for the good, for the good to those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. You need to be called, you need to stand on faith, and once you start trusting in God, it's like Abraham, Isaac, and Joseph, they're the, the people in Exodus, they gave with a willing heart, they were obedient to the word. They stood in faith, faith, and God works on our behalf. When we believe him, when we trust in him. So, you know, as we stated, adversity, hopefully, I think you'll look at it in a different light. Look at it from God's viewpoint. He's not here to destroy you. He's here for you to walk out on the other side. You know, I'm sure that this pandemic is not self-induced. But if your suffering is self-induced, allow the word of God to correct you. It's the result of persecution for righteousness sake. Stay in faith and watch God turn it around. You'll find out that adversity, affliction, is not a tool to defeat you, but an opportunity to you for you to become the greatest blessing God has. And you know, I hope this message blessed you tonight. I, 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 it's my prayer. Uh, God is a good God. I know we're all going through things. And so, you know, take to what I said, listen to it again. And uh, maybe during the week, I'll just put some little things on Facebook uh, posts or whatever. But you know, God loves you. God is for you. God wants you to be a winner. He wants you to prosper even in the middle of this, what we're going through right now. You know, I'll just tell you, everybody goes to the store, you know, because, you know, all of a sudden there was this big run on toilet paper and hand sanitizer. Every time my wife and I have gone to a store, everybody's saying, oh, don't go to Walmart. They don't have nothing. Don't go to Publix. That's the Winn-Dixie. They don't have nothing. Every time we walk in there, they got what we need. I don't understand. Don't go to Walmart. They don't have any chopped meat. Man, the other day we went in there, we bought four pounds. I, you know, it's amazing how God's got our back. Yes. He's got our back. Praise the Lord. Amen. So, 
with this, we'll close with this. I want to say a little prayer here before we close. What I say? And then my wife will come back and we'll sing a song. But again, I just want to remember, if you haven't texted, if you haven't given your offering, again, you can text it in. You could go online at w, uh, from the Grace Church com, or you can mail it. We really could use it because our offerings have gone way down, whether, you know, and we really need them back up so we can maintain. Amen. Well, let me pray, pray a prayer and my wife will come and sing. Father God, I praise you and I thank you for everyone that's watching this tonight. Lord, if there's somebody out there watching through a watch party or whatever, Lord, we ask if they don't know Jesus, now's the time to find them. Ask them to come into your heart. It doesn't matter how bad you... You know, God looks at the finished product. He's not looking at what you've done in your past. He's looking... He's got a future for you. And if you want to... You could bow your head right where you're at and say, Dear Lord Jesus, I messed up. I was a screw up. I'm a sinner. Whatever you want to say. But Lord, I repent tonight. And I ask Jesus to come and live in my heart. To be my Savior. To help me walk in faith. To help me learn how to do what this pastor was speaking about tonight. And if that's you, you could, you could email us at prayerandpraise at AbundantGraceChurch.com or at AGC at AbundantGraceChurch.com. Someone will call you. Someone will reach out to you if you, receive, if you prayed that prayer with me tonight. God bless you. Carol, come on back here. Praise <laughs> the Lord. God is good. We love you. And we'll see you Sunday. For sure, and don't forget healing school tomorrow. Well, I hope you got that message right. Pastor's not saying you're sinners and you're making mistakes and causing this to, to happen or come upon us, this uh, pandemic. We're not. Amen? It isn't. It is not of God. We know that, and uh, we know that we have victory over it because we're in Christ. And we have not, you know, we can... Uh, we have to be careful that we don't take on the cares of this and, and get into fear. So let's just do what uh, Pastor said. Let's uh, uh, praise God and release our faith for our families, for our churches, for our friends in the name of Jesus and tell somebody about Jesus this week. Tell them that Jesus is the answer, not the problem. And that the blood of Jesus is greater than any pandemic or anything he has sanctified us through that and he's delivered us through that through his precious blood so just continue to thank him for the blood of Jesus and we're going to go singing there's power in the blood amen again because there's power power wonder working power in the blood of the lamb yes there's power power Wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Cause there's power, power, wonder working power in the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Remember, keep your confession of faith up. Trust God, he will deliver you. Don't let fear enter in. Stay in faith and trust the Lord according to his word. And healing school tomorrow, and we'll see you Sunday. Okay. Hallelujah. God bless you all. Amen.